Now on to the Lamb upon the throne We raise our sound We raise our sound Oh, for He is God and God alone Hallelujah, hallelujah, say hey, lift your voice and say yeah. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Say hallelujah. Say hallelujah. 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 Say you are mighty God. You are mighty. Say you are worthy, Lord. You are worthy. Say you are worthy. Yeah. You are worthy. You are worthy. Say you are worthy, Lord. You are worthy. Say hallelujah. Eh. Hallelujah. Say hallelujah. Eh. Hallelujah. 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 For you are the mighty God, the great I am. Hallelujah, hallelujah, say you are the mighty God, the mighty God. Hallelujah, hallelujah. Say you are the mighty God, the mighty God, hallelujah, 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 you are the mighty God, the mighty You are the Come on, lift your voice and magnify Jesus. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. We lift your name. Oh. We lift your name. We lift your name. We lift your name. Your name, Fire. your name, God. Fire. Your name, Fire. so shout hallelujah, 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 hallelujah. Say, O Lord, 
Give the Lord a shout of praise. Come and see what the Lord has done for me. He has taken away my sorrows and I am free. I got my poor hallelujah, poor on. I got my poor hallelujah, poor on. So because of Jesus, every day I shook around it. Double, double, heavenly blessings that he might have received. I, Lord, your grace and mercy is always the fall of me. Say, hey, lift your voice and say, I got my poor hallelujah, poor. I got my poor hallelujah, poor. Lift your voice and say, Double the double the Lift your voice and say God has given me victory He has given me victory He has given me Halle, 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 say Hallelujah 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 Halle, halle, halle Halle, halle Hallelujah 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 Hallelujah. 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 Come and give the Lord a chance of praise. Say, when Jesus says yes, nobody can say no. Say, when my father says yes, yes, they know. Are you ready? Come on, everybody. Say up, up, say up, up, Jesus. Say up, up, Jesus. Say up, up, Jesus. Say up, up, Jesus. Lift your voice and say up, up, Jesus. Lift to Jesus. Lift him higher. Lift him higher. Lift him higher. Lift him higher. Say up, up, Jesus. Say up, up, Jesus. Say up, up, Jesus. Listen, when Jesus says yes, nobody can say no. When Jesus says yes, nobody can say no. When Jesus says yes, says, nobody can say no. So everybody, 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 say everybody, everybody, lift your voice and say. Up up Jesus, say up up Jesus, up up Jesus, up up Jesus, up up Jesus. Say, more we read, more we read, more see we read, I say. Come on, give the Lord a chance of praise. More we read, more we read, more we read, I say. 
Mumure, I am very grateful, Lord. You have done so much, much, much for me. You are the great and mighty God. Mumure, say Mumure, Mumure. Come on, lift your voice and magnify Jesus. For oh, you are the mighty God, the great I am. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. You are the mighty God, the great I am. Come on, say. Hallelujah. If you know the Lord has been faithful to you, say you are the mighty, the great and mighty God. Hallelujah! Hallelujah! Let's worship the Lord this evening and give Him glory. Let's call upon His holy name. Lift His name high. Is the King of kings and the Lord of lords, the almighty God, the great I am that I am. We glorify your name. Thank you, Lord God of heaven and earth. We bless your name. You are wonderful. You are marvelous. You are the King of kings and the Lord of lords, the great I am that I am. You are greater than the greatest, higher than the highest, better than the best. Father, we exalt your name, the creator of heaven and earth, the God of all flesh, we worship you. We glorify your name. Thank you for today. Thank you for yesterday. Thank you for your victories. Thank you for your deliverances. Thank you for your healings. Thank you for your blessings. Thank you for liftings. Thank you for promotion. Thank you for progress. Thank you for multiplication. Thank you for your wonders in our lives. Thank you for your mercy, for your kindness, for your faithfulness. Thank you for being there. Thank you for being here. Thank you for being everywhere. We exalt your name for moving in you, for having our being in you. Father, blessed be your name. We give you praise, we give you honor, we give you adoration. Be thou exalted, O God. In Jesus' mighty name, we are free. There's only one person that is here. In Jesus' mighty name, we are free. Let's tell him that God tonight, speak to me. Let my heart be touched by your word. Plant your seeds of grace, of goodness, of your kingdom in my heart. Let them germinate into mighty fruits. Let them come forth with great fruits in your life, in my life. Open your mouth and pray that today the words that we'll be hearing, let your word come expressly to me. Speak to me. You sent your word and heal them and deliver them from their destruction. Let your word tonight come to me Heal me, deliver me from my destructions. Let me be loosed. Let me be elevated. Let me be transformed, changed. Do that which your word wants me to do. Let your word be done in my life. Let me be quickened into that shape, into that mold that you have planned for my life, into that character of your personality. Lord, let my life resemble that of yours. Let me expressly demonstrate yourself in my life. Open my life unto you tonight. I open my life unto you tonight. Let your word be profitable in my life. In my heart, let it find fruits in the mighty name of Jesus. Thank you, almighty God. In Jesus' mighty name, we have prayed. Father, in the name of Jesus, we appreciate you this evening. We thank you for the opportunity of gathering today. For everything you have been doing, we appreciate you. You are the God of all flesh, the King of kings and the Lord of lords. We appreciate you for keeping us, for protecting us, for bringing us here. We can see with our eyes and speak with our mouths. We are in good health by your special grace. In any way we are here, we glorify your name. Accept our thanks in the name of Jesus. Tonight we are here for you and your word we want to hear your presence we want to embrace your power we want to have let your glory abide be abide us around us 
work in us in the mighty name of Jesus. Let your name be glorified in this meeting and thank you for everything that you have done. In Jesus' mighty name, we have prayed. Please, you may be seated. You are welcome to tonight's uh, Digging Deep. And uh, before we go, we would like to appreciate our Father in the Lord, the Continental Overseer and his wife, for giving, uh, for giving us this platform to uh, take this night's uh, Digging Deep. And also, we'd like to appreciate uh, assist his assistant, Pastor Joan and his wife, for the opportunity, for the love and the, the accommodation, for the help, for the, for the blessings through them, for giving us also this opportunity to share this digging deep. I appreciate everyone that is here tonight and those who are watching online. I believe that tonight, God will bless us in Jesus' name. Let's open our Bible quickly to Mark. Matthew chapter 25. Matthew chapter 25. We'll be reading from verse 1. It's a very long chapter, but it's already paraphrased. If anybody is there, it's good to read, but there will be, there will be a lot of verses that we'll be reading tonight. So then, child, the kingdom of heaven, we are the, the title or the topic of tonight's uh, Digging Deep is the prepared virgins. So we'll be talking about virgins in particular. So Matthew 25 from verse 1 says, Then shall the kingdom of heaven be likened unto ten virgins which took their lambs and went forth to meet the bridegroom. And five of them were wise, and five were foolish. They that were foolish took their lambs and took no oil with them. But the wise took oil in their vessels with their lambs. While the bridegroom tarried, they slumbered and slept. And at midnight there was a cry made. There was a cry made. Behold, the bridegroom cometh, go ye out to meet him. Then all those virgins arose and trimmed their lambs, and the foolish said unto the wise, Give us your oil, for our lambs are gone out. But the wise answered, saying, Not so, let there be not, lest there be not enough for us and you. But go ye rather to them that sell and buy for yourselves. Verse 10. And while they went to buy, the bridegroom came, and they that were ready went in with him to the marriage, and the door was shut. Afterward came also the other virgins, saying, Lord, Lord, open unto us. This shall never be our own portion in Jesus' name. Verse 12. But he answered and said, unto, and said, Verily I say unto you, I know you not. Watch therefore, for ye know neither the day nor the hour wherein the Son of Man cometh. This particular parable was given by Jesus, and it uh, is worth considering tonight. And he was talking about ten virgins that prepared for, prepared to meet a bridegroom. Excuse me, who was expected to arrive at an unexpected time. The bridegroom was expected, but they don't know the time he's coming. Five were regarded wise, but they took with them extra oil for their lands, while five were regarded as foolish for not having enough oil for the coming of the bridegroom. We'll be looking at the preparation of the virgins in this parable and what lessons we can learn from them as we also prepare for the return of Jesus Christ, whose arrival time is unknown so that we will not be left behind. May God teach us his words in Jesus' name. As I said earlier, there are virgins in this story, 10 virgins. Why? The reason why it was 10, we will not be talking about that. The reason why 10, the virgins who are 10 in number, is not our topic tonight. 
But one precise issue happened that there were five foolish ones and five wise ones. The foolish ones were regarded as those who didn't carry along extra oil. And we could see from the passage we read that before the bridegroom returned, the oil or the lamp they were carrying went off. So we'll be looking at some of the factors in this particular passage or parable. Who are these virgins? The first thing is, who are these virgins? The virgins in this parable represent those who have been separated from the world, cleansed by the blood of the Lamb, robed in the, with the righteousness of Christ, sanctified, chaste members of the church of God. If you look at 2 Corinthians chapter 5, 2 Corinthians chapter 5. I hope you are with your Bible. There will be a lot of Bible passages. Chapter 5, verse 21. It says, For he had made him to be seen for us who knew no sin, that we might be made the righteousness of God in him. So, our virgins here tonight, because I believe the virgins that are in Christ, I mean the people that are in Christ, are virgins. As according to that story or passage. If you look at 2 Corinthians chapter 11, verse 2, 2 Corinthians 11, verse 2. For I am jealous over you with godly jealousy, for I, am expoused, I have exposed you to one husband, that I may present you as a chaste virgin to Christ. So, Everyone that submits or is converted or is born again is regarded as a virgin. But one thing for sure is this. Chaste meaning is separated from uncleanliness. The person or the virgin is even separating himself from every form of uncleanliness. They were all the same according to this passage. The virgins were all the same outwardly, but differently inwardly. The, but different inwardly in preparation of the occasion. In this passage, if you look at the, the two sets of uh, two groups here, outwardly they were all prepared. They were virgins, but inwardly they were different. Five had extra oil for the lamps they carried, and five had no extra oil, as I said earlier. Number two. They brought along with them their functioning lambs. Some of them, I mean, anybody could carry lamb, but these ones carried functioning lamb. The, fun the lambs were functioning to that particular meeting, that occasion. Each virgin carrying a lamb, or each virgin carried a lamb that was burning, which represents spiritual life. The lamp represents a spiritual life or spirit or passion or faith. If you look at Isaiah chapter 4, Isaiah chapter 4, verse 4, he says, when the, Lord shall, when the Lord shall have washed away the filth of the daughters of Zion and shall have purged the blood of Jerusalem from the midst thereof of the spirit of judgment, and by the spirit of burning. If you look at Matthew chapter 5, verse 14, Matthew chapter 5, verse 14, he says, Ye are the light of the world. A city set on a hill cannot be hid. So a virgin is a, a light, light of the world. But we want to look precisely now what are the reasons for having the extra oil. We know that they carried oil. Why did they carry the extra oil? They, they weren't told that the bridegroom will come at a particular time, but some made extra effort to carry oil along with them. You know, when you are packing, you are traveling to a place. There are some things you put in your traveling bag. You put some, you, put, you take some away. But in this particular arrangement, these five virgins, who told them to take extra oil? 
why did they take extra oil? Why must they take extra oil? Because they were not told when the man will come, when the bridegroom will come. But the, what made them to take extra oil is what we will be looking at. One of the reasons why they took the extra oil, you know, after burning the lamb for a while, definitely there will be a problem. The oil was expected to sustain the fire from being extinguished by breeze, definitely. You know, whenever you put on your candle or your lantern, good enough, we are not using those anymore in Nigeria. We are now using LED and the rest. But those ones, they are different lamps. But notwithstanding, in this particular passage, there is a fire that was burning, a flame that was seen, but it could be put out by breeze. They had to take extra oil so that that flame would not be taken out by any form of distraction. And what could be this kind of breeze? If you look at Ephesians chapter 4, verse 14, Ephesians first, chapter 4, verse 14. You see here, he says that we henceforth be no more children tossed to and fro and being carried about from every wind of doctrine by the slit of men and cunning craftiness, thereby they, lay, they lie in wait to deceive. You see, one peculiar thing that is happening in the world now, many people can be converted. Many people are even converted. But many of them some of them, I do wonder, how do they get themselves into wrong places? Many, many, many places they call place of worship. But when you see what is going on there, you will be wondering, are these people actually going to heaven? They have all manners of doctrines that is strange. You know? As a born again, you, are, you may be bubbling with life, you are newly converted, but you know, you may just want to worship with anybody who says he is, or is a member of Christ. But sometimes some of them may not even examine some things because they are naive. That naivety is what the devil is also getting. That, that weakness is what many are falling for, are falling from, and they get entangled with all manners of doctrines. In 1 Corinthians chapter 14, verse 20, 1 Corinthians 14, verse 20, not children in understanding, how bet in malice be children, but in understanding be men. You see, it's a pity when people give their lives to Christ. Some will read or try to know much about Christ. Some don't. Or they don't understand what exactly they've read. But it's also expected that they should be tutored in the right way. But if they are tutored in the wrong way, they will keep on misunderstanding the Bible. But if you have the understanding in the first place of what exactly the Bible is saying, we are expected to grow and become men, matured in the word of the Lord. In John chapter 5, verse 35, John chapter 5, verse 35, it says about John, it says, It was a burning and a shining light, and ye were, ye were willing for a season to rejoice in his light. This was about John the Baptist. It was a shining light, just as we said about the people who have been withdrawn from the world, taken into God. They are light. You are a light. I'm a light. John the Baptist was a light. But there is a issue about John's Baptist experience. I, will, I may share if God permits. He was a light. But there is also an issue about his own light in his life. Praise the Lord. In Matthew chapter 11, Matthew chapter 11, verse 2 to 7. Now when John had heard in the prison the works of Christ, 
he sent two of his disciples and said unto him, Art thou he that should come, or do we look for another? John was the one who introduced Jesus. So this is where I'm talking about his own light. His light is having a problem gradually. He was in doubt again. The one who introduced Jesus, he was now asking again, are you the one that is to come or are we to expect another? And he said, and, and said unto him, are thou he that should come or do we look for another? Jesus answered and said unto them, go and shoot John again. Those things which ye do hear and see, the blind receive their sight, and the lame walk, and the lepers cleanse, are, are cleansed, and the deaf hear, and the deaf dead are raised up, and the poor have the gospel preached unto them. And blessed is he, whosoever shall not be offended in me. Hear what Jesus is saying. And they departed, and Jesus began to say unto the multitude concerning John, What went ye out into the wilderness to see? A reed shaken with the wind? His light was being shaken. He was in doubt. Even though he carried the spirit of Elijah. Praise the Lord. Number two, to sustain the heat, extra oil has to be taken. You know, when the fire is burning, you pour more oil. And when you pour more oil, the fire burns, the fire burns, there will be more heat. This heat that will be generated, what can it do? It will definitely expose darkness, expose the works of evil. As we can see in Acts chapter 28, verse 3. He did that in the hands of Apostle Paul. 8, verse 3. And Paul had gathered a bundle of sticks and laid them on the fire. And there came a viper out of the heat. So it was the heat that brought the, that snake. Many times when people are not on fire for the Lord, you will know that you are having or you are carrying poison. Paul carried some sticks for the heat, for the fire. And as the fire was rising... That was when they discovered there was a snake. In 2 Peter chapter 3, verse 10. 2 Peter chapter 3, verse 10. But the day of the Lord will come as a thief in the night, in the which the heavens shall pass away with a great noise, and the elements shall melt with fervent heat, and the earth also, and the works that are daring shall be burned up. Whatsoever that is wrong within us, when the fire of God comes in, it will destroy them. Chains are broken. Bonds are destroyed. That is what the heat will do. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord now. Number three, what the oil will do in the lamp is to help the fire to burn brighter. You know, the more you put the fuel, the brighter the light will be. So it will give more strength and establish dominance and preeminence in a location. For instance, we are looking at the bright lights here. How many are here? There are so many. You can see the dominance. If I bring out my own touch, the strength of my own touch cannot be compared with all this one. Is that not so? So, but if I now magnify the lamp or the light from my own touch that this whole place is so bright will you be able to see just like when God created the heaven and the earth he said there are two lights the first light came from him from his body the second light was the sun but one thing was this there was light and there was a greater light and him was light and him was life. Praise God. So, the intensity of the light will grow higher. If you look at Psalm 18, Psalm 18, verse 32. 
Psalm 18, verse 32. It is God that giveth me strength and maketh my way perfect. When the light of God is in you, God is the one that can give you strength. When there is light in you, it will strengthen you. It will make your way perfect. That's the effect of life. When more fuel, when you uh, identify yourself with God, when, well, we'll be talking more about those things that deals with the fuel here. In Proverbs chapter 4, verse 18. Proverbs, if you look at Proverbs chapter 4, verse 18. But the part of the just is as the shining light that shineth more and more unto the perfect day. So the righteous, the just will keep shining as they relate with God or they have more of God in their lives and they will be shining unto the perfect day. Number four. Why is the extra oil needed? To keep the, burn, the fire burning and this will prolong the life. It will prolong the life. The more the fuel, the more the fire. The more it grows, the more it stays. If you look at different life, maybe you burn uh, wood and then uh, that of a tire. Which one burns, past, burns longer? The tire. Thank you, sir. The tire has compacted fuel. In the case of the wood, the fuel is just one. The tire has many other constituents, many other things that will make fuel, and it will be burning continuously. So these people gathered some things that are needed to make extra life. You know, we like to buy batteries. Nobody would like to buy a battery that would last for a short time. In fact, in when you are buying your phone, I believe you will have looked at it. How many uh, milliamps hour that your phone will last? It's not the one that you'll be charging your phone every minute. You look for the battery that will last for maybe a day, two days, three days. If possible, one year without charging, you buy that phone. Why? You want a longer lasting life. We deserve to have a longer lasting life in Christ. If you look at Proverbs chapter 3, verse 12, uh, Proverbs chapter 3, Verse 1. He says, Peace and long life and peace shall they hard to thee. Let, no, let not mercy and truth forsake thee. Bind them about thy neck. Write them upon the table, table of thy heart. These are instructions. I will be running so swiftly. Number five. Why is the oil necessary? The extra oil is necessary to maintain their departure from darkness. Look at the five foolish ones. When their lamp went out, would they be in darkness? Tell me. Tell me. Their lamp was, must they go back to darkness? That is in the spiritual law. In the spiritual, when a lamp is gone out, it is either dead or he has gone, he has, the person has backslidden. If you look at Colossians chapter 1, verse 13, Colossians actually talks about that. Colossians chapter 1, verse 13, he says, Who had delivered us from the power of darkness and translated us into the kingdom of his dear son? You see, these people, they are, they are how will I say? How will I qualify them? They are. You know, some people will say, Chelsea, I'm sorry, I'm not a fan of any of this football team. Some people will say, Arsenal for life or Chelsea for life. These ones are saying, Jesus for life. Diet and life. Jesus. There are no, no turning back. Like that, that song will say, I have decided to follow Jesus. No turning back. No turning back. Those who are the foolish ones, they don't mind. Anyhow, if anything, no work, no show, I can return to where I'm coming from. But these ones, there are no way. Cut off every bridge. Now, let me now go to the 
the, the, to, the, to the real cocoa of the story that we need to take as Christians. You see, those first areas are good. The reason you must have extra oil, we've shared it. But how did they get that oil made? There are different types of oil. Though. There is petrol. There is kerosene. There is diesel. There is uh, vegetable oil. There is palm oil. Abi, and the, when you there is coconut oil. Abi, when you put on all this oil, put fire on them, they will burn at different rate, different way. Different. In fact, you see the petrol makes so much noise. You know, when you will set a fire at, on petrol, you make bow and the whole place will burn and it will die. This will come. It burns for a while, but it keeps burning. It won't die, unlike petrol. So what makes the fuel, the oil that these people pro produced, to make all these requirements that we have said earlier? Now, I want you to look at these passages in the Bible with me. Matthew, we are going to start with one. Number one, they had the love of God, number one. Love for God. Love for God. Matthew 22, 33. Matthew 22, verse 37, sorry. He says, Thou shalt love the Lord thy God with all thy heart. It's not a mistake, oh. With all thy heart. There's no jara, no side cheek, no vacancy. With all their heart. With all thy soul. Every decision has to be with God. And with all thy what, mind. When they are thinking, they are thinking about Jesus. Thinking about God. In fact, if you look at an extension of it in Luke chapter uh, 10, Luke chapter 10, verse 27. Um, excuse me. It's not Luke chapter 10. Luke chapter 10, verse 27. In Luke chapter 10, he says, With all thy strength, he added it. With all thy strength. The first one didn't say strength. But this one, everything you want, if, you, if the last breath you have, is on, they have it on God. That is the first love. That is the first ingredient to their oil. Desperate for God. Number two, the preaching of the gospel. In 1 Corinthians chapter 1, 1 Corinthians chapter 1, verse 18. 1 Corinthians chapter 1, verse 18, for, it says, For the preaching of the cross is to them that perish foolishness, but unto us which are saved, it is the power of God. That's speaking to people. That good news, that sponsoring, that gospel that you are sharing, tracts you are sharing, praying for missionaries, praying for the word of God, Praying for people for salvation. It is the power of God unto salvation. And it is also coming to you. The, the dividend of what you are doing is coming. It strengthens your salvations too. In Romans chapter, in fact, in verse 18, let me not drop verse 18. Well, let me go to Romans. Let, let's go to Romans. Romans chapter 1, verse 18. 16. Romans chapter 1 verse 16. For I am not ashamed of the gospel of Christ. Look at this is the, the nature of one of the good or wise uh, virgins. It is the power of God. It's not a shame. Don't be ashamed. If you are ashamed of the gospel, uh -uh, how will you get there? We should not be ashamed, first of all. It is the power of God unto salvation to everyone that believeth, to the Jew first and also to the Greek. Number two. Sorry, we have finished number two. Number three, rather. Number three, 
we should grow. They grow in faith. How do they grow in faith and confidence? Growing in faith and in confidence. Many people who have given their lives to Christ, what confidence do they have? Where they come, sometimes they come to church and they are not too sure. You should be sure. You should have confidence. So assurance must be there. You must grow it. You must grow it. You must develop the confidence in God. I, I, I do. There are so many songs that uh, some singers have sung, and I, so many wonderful songs. But when you look at some of their songs, they are wonderful. It cannot disappoint. There, I, there was there is a song in Ebola. It, it cannot disappoint. I can't say it, but, but the song says we should have confidence in God. In Mark chapter 11, it talks about faith. What exactly is faith? Mark 11. Jesus was saying it here. Mark 11 verse 22. He says, have faith in God. One, that meaning is as tall as you are or as short as you are, God is not the same height with you. He's not as short as you. He's not as you are. He has more abilities than you do. Have faith in him. He can deliver far more than you. Have faith in his ability. He created you. You didn't create yourself. In fact, how many of the problems in this world do you carry on your head that God sees? Don't weigh yourself down. God sees all the wahala. But as he come to you to say, ah, I'm having a headache. So have faith in God. There is no problem that is above him. Have faith in God. He says, verily I say unto you, that whosoever, which includes you and I, shall say unto this mountain, be thou removed, and be thou cast into the sea, and shall not doubt in his heart, but shall believe that those things which he saith shall come to pass, as you are saying it like this, it's going to happen. And it is happening. You may not see it, it will happen. That's what he said. He says, as you believe it will happen like that, it will happen. And he says, he shall come to pass, he shall have whatsoever he said. So as you are saying it, when you even come to God in prayer, the first thing, don't just be blabbling or hmm, your mind. You know the first place we said, your heart, your mind, to God, your heart and mind must also be in the prayer you are saying. It is important. We will not be talking so deep into that area. And believe as you are saying it, what you are saying will be. First Timothy chapter 1 verse 19. First Timothy chapter 1 verse 19. He says, hold thin holding faith and a good conscience and have which some having put away concerning faith have made shipwreck. Some people start well, but they didn't end well. They started with Christ, but maybe because of one reason or the other, they will know, are you sure that this Jesus Papa they come? Are you sure we need to, do you think there is heaven with what is happening in the world now? People will be saying many things if you, but those ones are by the way. In Ephesians chapter 3, Ephesians chapter 3, verse 12, it says, In whom we have boldness and access with confidence by the faith of Him. When you have faith in Him, it's not a disappointing, it's not a disappointing God. If you believe that He will not disappoint you, you are important in him. You are important for him because he needs you to speak of his goodness. He won't disappoint you. Proverbs chapter 3 verse 26. Proverbs chapter 3 verse 26. It says, for the 
Lord shall be thy confidence. Don't have confidence in man. People can disappoint you. The person who promised you heaven and earth yesterday can, can die. He may not even die. He may even go ahead and disappoint you. I say he changed his mind. But God doesn't change his mind just like that. He changed not. Ancient of this. His age is the same. You are growing, Abby. You are growing taller. When did they tell you to come and celebrate the birthday of God? What's the age of God by now? He is the king of kings and the lord of lords. One is the master of time and season. So there is no day or time with him. He is the owner. He can suspend time. He can move the time. He is not living in time. He is living in eternity. Praise God. How about prayer? The, another ingredient that these people brought in. Let me just be rational. Is prayer. Prayer. They added prayer to their life. Their spiritual life grew in prayer. They, they took time into the area of prayer. In Matthew chapter 26, verse 41, you will read about that. They led themselves into praying for their life, praying for other things. Pray. Pray without ceasing. They prayed without ceasing. Number five, there is one area here I love. That is the joy in the Lord. Not there is joy of the Lord, there is joy in the Lord. Nehemiah 8 10 talks about the joy of the Lord is your strength. Is that not so? Good. But when you look at Second Chronicles chapter 20, 21 to 22, talks about what Jehoshaphat went through. You know, they saw battle. How many kings came to fight them? Three kings. And God said they should, you know what they said they should do? They are going to battle, not with stones, not with uh, the fling of David. In fact, David's own is even different. He didn't sing before he went to battle. We didn't hear him sing. But these people, they are going to battle, just like the people that faced uh, 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 was it Jericho, the wall of Jericho. They were singing. They were dancing. Is it to their death or to their victory? That's what people will reason. Are they pe are these people okay? But they were rejoicing in the Lord, and He gave them the result without work. That's in Second Chronicles chapter 20, 21 to twenty-two. They were now harvesting what they didn't even work for. The same thing happened in Acts chapter 16, 25 to 26. Paul and Silas were in prison. I mean, they've been flogged. Their body would have been aching them. Chains on their legs and arms tied to the wall. Maybe they didn't even give them any food. Not as a result of fasting. They've been mocked, flogged, scorned, slapped. But because of the gospel. But at midnight, you know these people, they rose up and started dancing and rejoicing. Is that not the joy? The joy of the Lord. The joy in the Lord is, is greater than explosives. To the extent that the walls of the prison and the walls, I mean, the, 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 the chains, the, the, the doors and the gates were brought down. Far more than dynamite. But they were alive. That's what a dynamite will do. A bomb will do. Maybe bunker bombs. I mean, uh, 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 bunker destroyers. It destroyed the, 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 the prison. Number six. I'm rushing now. These people had determination and diligence on his word, and spiritual life. They had determination in their life, just like Daniel in Daniel chapter 1 verse 8. Daniel determined in his heart. There is a determination. People, some people come, they, they, are, they are in Christ. They are not determined what they want to do with their lives. Determine. There must also be diligence, consistency in what you have decided. In Second Peter 
chapter 10, I mean, chap, Second Peter chapter 1, verse 10. It says, Wherefore, rather, brethren, give diligence to make your calling and election sure. Make it sure to yourself and to God. Not just say, wish you worship Christians. Many people, I won't want to talk about those ones. You should make yourself sure of who you are serving. Are you sure? Are you, you look at the, the trail of Paul, when, where he went to. Praise God. Number seven, there you put into remembrance the promises of God. When you remember the promises of God and the hope of his calling, in 2 Peter chapter 1, verse 4, 2 Peter chapter 1, verse 4, he says, Whereby are given, whereby are given unto us exceeding great and precious promises, that by this ye might be partakers of the divine nature, having escaped the corruption that is in the world true lust. Remember, whenever there is a disturbance around about you, remember the promises of God. Whenever you see people dying, remember the promises of God for you. Whenever you see things not working the way you expect, remember the promises of God. Praise the Lord. They had the gate. What I would love to share, they were maturing in Christian character. Let us read this please. In Second Peter chapter 1, 2 Peter chapter 1, verse 5 to 11. And besides, I will even, pre I will have preferred, I will have preferred to read it in, um, in Amplified. I prefer to read it in Amplified. For this reason, adding your diligence to the divine promises, you know the promises, employ every effort in exercising your faith, to develop virtue. What is virtue? Excellence, resolution, and Christian energy. And in exercising that virtue, you must develop knowledge. That's your intelligence in Christ. And in exercising the knowledge, you must develop self-control. And develop, as you have self-control, develop steadfastness. That's patience, endurance, and as you are doing that, it's a graduation. You are moving in class. You must develop steadfastness. From developing steadfastness, you move into godliness. And from there, you move into brotherly affection. And from there, you move on to Christian love. Many people don't know that you need to go through this path to be fulfilled in Christ. And finally, you must grow. Sorry, I just jumped one area. You must acquire wisdom and revelation, which is in Proverbs chapter 7, verse 9. Proverbs chapter 7, verse 7 to 9. And Ephesians chapter 1, verse 17. In fact, that Ephesians, if you won't mind me reading it, where Paul was praying that, look, as you come into Christ, pray this prayer that God, the Almighty God, will give you the spirit of wisdom and revelation. Why? You see, many people are saying they are Christians, but Christians without no understanding. They don't understand what is going around them, and they still believe they are going to heaven. Get that first. You must get wisdom. Wisdom in this is the principal thing. That's Proverbs 7 to 9. And then, grow in grace. Who loves grace here? Everybody. But how do you grow in grace? Second Peter chapter 1, verse 2. He says we grow in grace by what you know in the world. Grow in grace. Second Peter chapter 1, verse 2. He says, may grace, excuse me, grace and peace be multiplied unto you through the knowledge of God and of Jesus our Lord. So grace will be multiplied. Through what? Your knowledge in God. Your knowledge. And that's good knowledge, that is. Let me just round off here. The quality of a fire, as I said before, depends on the quality of the oil that wells it. The prevailing and combination of these oil ingredients or elements will determine the quality of the spiritual life you have. The, 
The five virgins could not give some oil to the foolish ones when approached because it was hard to ask for them. But what they had to was only for themselves. Your relationship with God is personal and nobody can improve on it on your behalf. That was why the bridegroom said he knew them not after the doors were closed. Are you truly prepared for your house? Are you truly prepared with your household for the Lord's coming? What shall we shall not miss the marriage supper of the Lamb in Jesus' name? Praise the Lord. Questions? Are there questions? Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. I thank God for this beautiful lesson. I just have a question. Um, as a Christian and as a bridegroom of Christ, preparing for the coming of our Lord Jesus Christ, um, there's sometimes as a Christian, we, as in like, let me, let me put it in my own. There's sometimes I do do things that I wish not to do. And when I finish doing those things, I will go on my knees and pray. And I will tell God, God, I've, told, I've said I don't want to do this thing. Why am I keeping on doing this thing? And whenever I prayed, I feel free, I feel relieved. But later on, I'll go back to that thing as a Christian and, and as a child of God. How can I escape those things I used to do that I don't want to do? Thank you very much. Okay. It's easy. It's possible. It's easy. We all went through that part too. Like children, yeah, you fall into pit. God will bring you out like your baby. I mean, when you are a baby, you they gave you uh, whatsoever baby food in the, as a child. But when you are crawling, you saw death on the way. You put it in your mouth. They clean it from your mouth. And yeah, it's possible as a Christian. But we are not supposed to remain in that position. That's why there is a conscience telling you, a good conscience telling you, the spirit of God pricking your heart that what you have done is wrong and you need to get out of it. It, it pollutes you. You can move out of it. One, what encourage you, you must look at the source, the cause of that problem. What aids you into doing it? What enables you into doing it? You must block that access. What encourages you in doing it? Whatsoever thing you do that is wrong, that is sinful, that you have identified is wrong. What encourages you? You must get to the root of it and destroy it. If it is true movies that when you look, you lost your anything, you block that access. You take it out of the way. Whatsoever reminds you of that thing to encourage to bring you to it again, you must get rid of it. Because it's not about prayer alone. You, there is a personal issue you have to do from yourself. God has his own part. You have your part. Everybody has to do it. After that, you have to get the word of God to fill the place that thing has get out, gotten out. Encouraging yourself in the word of God. The word of God is a, water, is a pure water that cleanses you. And also is a seed that plant, you must plant. When you meditate in the word of God to replace that thing that comes to your mind, the, every time, the word of God, instead of doing that thing, you replace, you remind yourself, all these things I will share, you remind yourself of the promises of God, you want to lose all the benefits of God because of this thing. You, you saw the, Jesus had the cross I had. He saw the shame. He could have changed his mind at the Garden of Gethsemane when he was encouraged to, to change his mind. But he said, not my will, but thy will be done. But one thing he did was he kept focusing on that cross. You have to focus your mind, your attention. You see the place where everybody has always fallen. The devil does not attack you directly. It attacks you first from your heart. Your mind first, excuse me, what you meditate, you think, your heart. You decide your soul.
suicide. It is from your mind, goes to your heart. And that is why when you sleep, you, when you wake up, people will say they had a bad dream. That's a signature, the shooting of the devil, for you to meditate in what he wants you to do and plan your life towards it. You have to get rid of it. So the word of God is there for us. As it's, it's not a substitute, but the devil wants to substitute the word of God for his own. So when you feed yourself with the word of God, that's one. I've named two things. Get encourage yourself with the people that are having godly mind who encourage you, who enforce you, motivate you. You look at some people. Don't worry. Don't put your trust in those ones. Some people may fail. But mind you, there are so many examples in the Bible, characters we can look at that will encourage you. But definitely, when you come into the garden of God, as I always enjoy, when you come to Bible study, there is a cleansing that happens when you come to Bible study. You are not praying for it. These are some special benefits people don't even understand concerning Bible study. You, as you come in into the garden, if the garden is truly for the God, kingdom of God, angels will cleanse you of some debts. You don't even pray for them. It will be telling you, this one, clean it, clean, 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 clean. You didn't ask for them because you have come into the midst of God where the word of God is being shared and God will cleanse you. So, and as you are coming out, you must carry the blessings of what God has shown you, told you, encouraged you in the word of God. Meditate. Meditation is a very powerful tool, not prayer. When you pray, when you meditate a lot in the word of God, it aids your prayer. It makes a greater power in you. I hope I've answered your question. Any question? Yes, ma'am. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Praise the living Jesus. Can you hear me? Okay. Yes, ma'am. So, um, my question is, you, we are talking about the prepared virgin in relation to oil. Yes. Yes. Yeah, so, um, in today's Christianity, a lot of people carry, seem to carry contaminated oil. So how do you know as a Christian? Because we all carry oil. So how do we know that our oil is contaminated or is pure or is... Um, because a lot of people have an anointing, but there's something... I hope you understand. You see, the word of God says, by their fruit you shall know them. What are the fruits they are manifesting? You will see it, you will know them. Well, maybe as I will go... Let me go to the area of a very day one Christian who doesn't know anything. Not the ones that... You see, as I said earlier, these ingredients are the ones that will help you to identify certain things when you come. There's a particular prayer I will always encourage people to go through. Let's look at it in Ephesians chapter 1. verse 17. Prayer that Paul was praying, it wasn't a joke. It says that, and I want you to pray it too. That the God, I also prayed it. And I, I was encouraged to pray in this particular, it is a prayer point. That the God of our Lord Jesus Christ, the Father of glory may give you the spirit of wisdom and revelation in the knowledge of him. If you don't have revelation of what is going on, of what is going on around you. You won't know if it is good or evil. Revelation is different from information. It's not information. God pricking your mind, telling you this is what, he will open your Bible, he will show you. When we come to Bible study, when we come to church, we are expected to open your Bible. In fact, as I'm speaking here, when we are reading the Bible, if you are reading your Bible, and God wants to show you something different from what I'm saying, he will reveal. That is revelation. He will tell you directly, expressly what concerns you. There's something that is about to happen or is happening or around your life. An answer to a question. That's revelation. And that is from the word of God. You pray that God should give you the spirit of wisdom and revelation in the knowledge of him. That the eyes of understanding being enlightened. You are not blind. You see everything. When people are sinning, God, let me know. 
this person is a sinner. He will tell you. If you are sincere to know, he will show. Understanding, be enlightened, that he may know what is the hope of his calling. That's another story, another prayer. But when your eyes is enlightened, you have knowledge of the word of God, expose your word to me. Let me understand. God will expose his word. He's not going to hide it. There's no secrecy. He's the owner of everything. He opens his word to you. He makes you know what exactly you should know. And I've tried to tell you how you should apply it into your life. When you get to know these things, it makes your life simpler. You see, one thing that is happening is that many people that are in, in the wrong congregation, because they are not interested in the light. They are not truly interested in the light. They are interested in other things. You know when Jesus was on earth, many crowd came with him. He fed 5,000. Abby, 5,000? 4,000? How many disciples do we have in the Bible? How many? 12. But you know he sent 72 to, uh -huh, 72 out first. How come out of 5,072, then 12. What were they interested? Jesus said they were interested in bread and butter. They want to eat. That's why they were following him. Many people are in the church today. Are they truly going to heaven? They are, are they interested in heaven? Is it God solved this problem? When after God solving this problem, they are gone. They are not mindful. It has not even on, on they have not come to the understanding of the reason why Christ died. And in fact, you see, when you get to know about the crucifixion, gong, gong, the meaning of crucifixion of Christ for you, you would run away from sin. I'm serious. Let God, that's one of the prayers. Tell God, expose yourself. Teach me about this, your death. Tell me more about this, your death. Expose me to see. Let him show you. Thomas wanted to see the hand. He saw the hand. What did he say? My Lord and my God. He didn't believe before that Jesus came alive. Eh? The person that was crucified, buried, covered with a stone, can he be alive? He came, he showed his hand. Eh? Did he believe or did he, he didn't believe? He believed and he gave his, he, he, he was, how did, did he die? While preaching the gospel. Praise God. I've taken much of your time. Yes. I know the lesson is basically on the wise virgin, but if we look at the story critically, we see that the ten were virgins. That's to say they were pure, clean. When, you know the significance of virgin. When you say someone is a virgin, that, you're talking about purity. That means these people were pure. Though the Bible calls five foolish, but we see that these ones were really waiting. They had the oil. The significance of the oil, you know, is the spirit. Yes, they knew this oil is sufficient to last till the master comes. But according to the scripture, they said he tarried. And that was why. So can we really say they are foolish? No, I'm not trying to go against God's instruction. Yes, can we truly say? Because these people also, they are like the wise ones. They were both virgins. They were pure. They were walking in holiness, purity, serving God diligently. But it happened that their oil finished. So... Thank you, ma. I like that. It's a great question. I'll share it with you. You see one great thing that happens when a person gives his life to Christ. Oh, I'm born again. I'm in church. They participate in all church programs or go to fellowship. There's oil inside already. When you buy your, bat, your phone, new phone, they will say after buying, you charge it for maybe 12 hours. But before charging, won't the phone come alive? Eh? There is battery power in that phone. That is what happens. There is battery power when you give your life. Without doing any effort, you will be... Huh. When they... Ah, oh, you pray, 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 pray. But tell me, when problems come, the first problem, you God defeated it for you. Some you 
overcame many challenges and suddenly you see God will expect you you are in class one it is time to move to class two but instead you want pastor to pray for you for problem you want uh, your people to be praying your parents to be praying your people your friends to be praying only for you Cabo. It, that is where you remain it's not you that is where the person will remain when problems start come that is when people will now when you call the person let's go to church now oh, i'm tired though that is the beginning you see lukewarmness sets in that oil is dying the flame is dying do you know when the flame is dying complain will come the first complaint the love of god was going it will be going gradually the devil is a liar he doesn't attack front on it's when someone is weak it will, but before he attacks very well he will be giving you giving the person not you not all of any of us small small things that would that will entice the person judas iscariot was a preacher Disciple, Abi, among the first twelve, not seventy-two, first twelve. How did the devil get him? How did the devil get him? The preacher that went about preaching the gospel. He, the devil knows that he likes money. He's a businessman. He can sell anything, and to the point he wanted to sell Jesus Christ, and he sold Jesus Christ. He doesn't mind selling his salvation. The same thing with Esau. After he did it, he, did they know when he was, he was doing it? He had fallen. Jesus knew he was stealing. It's a small sin, though. Know? It will come gradually. And that is how the devil works. He comes in gradually. Harmless. Look at Eve. Was he telling? Ah, Eve! This is Satan. I'm the devil. No, I'm not the devil. He won't say that. Did God tell you that you should not eat this fruit? That is how he does. And so that you will not just lose your, you take the armor. And that's how he, he fights. Many Christians are falling because of that. They don't charge themselves. This oil, they didn't bother. They didn't equip themselves. They didn't prepare. They are not bothered. You see, and the unfortunate thing is that when we gave our life, rapture didn't take place. God expected us to grow and gather muscle. Hey, like David. A small boy. 18 years, 17 years. Saw Goliath. Where did he get that power? He had boldness in the bush. Confidence in the God. When a mighty man that he has been fighting told him, I will cut off your head. He said, hey, me? Hey, I will give your flesh to the birds of the air. I will cut off that head too. Hey, what kind of boldness is that? He was loaded with oil. Praise the Lord. Any other question? We've taken much of your time. Can we, can we rise on our feet? I'm so sorry we've taken much of our time. We've exceeded the time. And I want us to pray. Not moving away from the, 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 the real point of the issue. Father, I need your help. I don't want to miss rapture. I don't want to miss your kingdom. I need you to help me to fill up myself with your life. That my fire will grow. Will be sustained. Will be with so much favor, so much fire, so much heat. It will grow into prominence and be ready for your coming. That when you come, I won't, I won't be deaf to hear your voice. I won't be distracted. I won't lose it. I won't lose it for anything. I won't trade your salv my salvation for anything. Not for me alone, my household, every member of my family, my friends and and church members will not lose it. I won't lose it. 
we won't lose it. Grant us, grant us this opportunity. You made these five wise virgins to make it. That ability, give it to me, Lord, tonight. Help me to make it. I cannot do it. You made it. You made it for them. Help me. You made it for Peter not to fall. Help me, Lord. Open your mouth and pray. for the lesson that we have learned tonight. It, it, it taught us how to wait prepared for God, for Jesus, anytime, any moment. Because by the time those ones, they were looking for extra oil, Jesus came. May the Almighty guide us to be fully prepared for his coming in the name of Jesus. Brother Paul said that so that I may know him, I may know him, the power of his death and resurrection. The grace to know him, the Lord will give unto us in Jesus' name. Let us point our hands to the pastor the Lord has used this evening for the almighty God to continue to increase him in knowledge, in wisdom, in revelation, in the name of Jesus. For the almighty God to continue to make you vessels unto honor in the name of Jesus. The Lord will bless your ministry. He will bless your work. He will bless your family. The Lord will give you the grace to be prepared for Christ. Anytime, any moment, is going to come. In Jesus' mighty name, we have prayed. Praise the Lord. Praise the living Jesus. We've had the Lord. And we have gained a lot. We are to repay back. Offering time. Offering time. Choir. Yoruba station, 8, a, 8 30 a.m. for the English session. Thursday, 6 15 for Faith Clinic. The Lord will give us the grace to be available in the name of Jesus. And Sunday, two services. The first one starts by 7.40 a.m. And this 
Sunday school is 9.30 to 10. And the second service starts by 10 to 12. Remember, there is going to be an anointing service on Sunday. So, make yourself available. The Almighty God will help us in Jesus' name. And June celebrates. Sunday is the grand finale of June celebrants, celebration galore. Please prepare for it. By Friday, we are going to have um, Riasa. Those who are going to know that within ourselves. Please make yourself available. And we are going to have Jesus shop. So, you are welcome. God bless you. So, praise the Lord. Let us... Eh? Evangelism on Saturday. Please. It is very, very important to evangelize. Some people evangelize to you. That is the more reason you are here. Some people evangelize for me. And that is the more reason I can stand. And this. Please let us invite our people around. Go around. Encourage them. Some invitation has been given. Please don't put it inside your bag. Let us thank God for the message that we've had. Father, we just want to bless your holy name. We appreciate you, mighty Father, because you have done it. Glory be to your name in the eyes in Jesus' name. We will never be late for Christ in Jesus' name. The grace to prepare for his second coming, the Lord will give us the enablement in Jesus' name. We are going to go with us in the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus, let us go safely. And those who will be here for the Fiji, keep them safe and sound in the name of Jesus. Tomorrow morning, we shall have every cause to glorify your holy name. In Jesus' mighty name, we have prayed. The grace, the love of God, and his sweet fellowship of his Holy Spirit.